Hello, I'm Aaron and welcome back to the Last End Gamers channel. So today we're taking a look at another ship from the Steam Workshop. This time we're actually having a look at a little bit more of a practical one. A lot of the Space Engineers community demand super practical ships that they could take into fights and possibly win. Now, I agree with them, but at the same time I do like a pretty looking ship as well. And if you can do both and wiggle your legs like that... Well, you're on for a winner. So this is the Tackler Frigate. It's it's got some interesting names in front of it. A Wriggler Tackler Frigate. Hmm. Still very cool. We've got lots of detail in, lots of color tone usage, and we've got quite a serious bit of firepower. And what I've see, been seeing when I've been looking at a lot of functional ships is these forward firing rocket pods. So this particular one has six, so it's quite suitable for a lot of servers. It's got reserve backup cameras. You can see there's a fake sort of antenna. You've got a spotlight there, very important in case you enter a dark area. You've got some strobe lighting there. And look at the weapon stacking here. So these weapons will be able to engage a lot of targets from these angles and you can see they're also protected quite well from the front so we've got gatling guns missile launchers and we've got some interior turrets for for good value i'd say interior turrets are kind of looked down on but they can really save your bacon in some circumstances so let's have a look around the bottom half as well so there isn't really a top or bottom outside to this ship because the ship is actually stacked vertically inside that's quite interesting so as we come around, you can see how the armor's been curved around, wrapping around their missile launchers, and it leads us into both the Gatling gun and missile launcher that I talked about before. We've got the spaced armor in this section. We've got lots of these outrigged pieces of armor as well that look really cool. These look like the heavy armor components, and you can see that's been combined with both the standard armor block as well as a few carbon pieces. And you've got these whites and grays as well as the carbon just to break up the shape. And something that you can learn from many creators is doing this just really gives a, a ship a little more depth and texture so coming back in this section you notice these cool little hydrogen thrusters that are tucked away very protected back here and you'll also also notice that then we've got ourselves a turret so let's just have a quick look if we have a quick look behind we don't know why we've got an auto welding system so no auto welding system aboard this ship but it can be quite useful to keep your turrets online see we've got a cool little logo more tucked in thrusters both hydrogen and uh, ion a very good combination hydrogen do draw a lot of power well not power they do draw a lot of hydrogen and you can run out so having them iron back up is a very good solution so you can see the ship actually starts to get much wider in this segment. You can see how the armor wraps around this area, around the thrusters really nicely. You can see these little outcrops, a little bit of lighting. And you can see most thrusters are recessed out the way. Recessing thrusters like this will really help you survive a fight. And I've got a feeling that this ship is designed just for that. I believe it can actually be broken in two and still fight. So that's a very good capability. I remember some of the ships that Pabble built for the DRF were designed that they could literally be snapped in half and continue to fight. And that was a, a great idea, really. Especially if you've got two pilots. If you've got one, then the other part becomes a turret. But that's besides the point. So around the back here, we've got more thruster housing. You can see how the thrusters have actually been tucked in here as well. We've got an interior turret here. Very smart because sometimes people will try to jetpack your men or what we like to call them, hydrogen man them, where they'll tuck themselves in and start grinding in. So them little turrets there might give you a little bit of breathing room. And you can see that there's landing gear. So this is designed for a vertical landing. So when it's on planet, it could face straight up and be able to fly and land quite well. So it looks like we've got quite an armament on this ship. We've got a selection of Gatling guns. So seeing this, we've got three there. We've got one on the front there. So that's a total of four on this side. And we've got a mixture of interior turrets, like another four interior turrets, and then two missile launchers. So that's quite capable of dealing a lot of damage. So let's pop ourselves inside, and we'll try not to get too lost, because this is where things do get a little confusing. So we've got the airlock here on the side. We've got connectors at both top and bottom of the airlock. And if you've been building it in Survival in Space Engine Days, not having to go into your ship to access a connector is a lifesaver. So quickly jumping onto one of these and grabbing the parts you need when you're building and working is great. So as we enter in through the airlock, you can see we've got combat information center. We've actually got a cryo bay down there and we've got a survival kit right here. Some cool little detailing on some of these screens as well. The survival kit's great because it means if you are working outside the ship and you do die or you get in a little bit of a fight, you can jump out there. Nice warning message here. No oxygen beyond this point and plenty of cargo containers. This is something a lot of people forget. When they're in a rush to get back into the fight, you need cargo containers like this near an exit so you can quickly uh, jump in and get stuck into the action. So this is combat information center. We'll go up and then we'll go back down. 
So inside here, we've got some cool little layouts. So you can see the, this is actually running the WMI radar system, so it can detect ships around it. Oxygen systems in here, very cool indeed. And you've got the cockpit there to fly it. So quite a compact interior. There isn't too many doors. So if someone does get aboard, you might be in a little bit of trouble, but you also might be able to fend them off. There's not many interior turrets, but we'll continue looking through. So we've got cryo chamber down here, so you can see it's got three, or is it four cryo chambers? Four cryo chambers, so that isn't too bad. A four crew is very realistic within Space Engineers, especially in some circumstances. And then we've got a door that takes us down to the lower maintenance access. Warning, no oxygen beyond this point also a gravity generator but you can see the color tones are quite nice here we've got various shades of gray and then we've got some orange to replicate hydrogen systems that always looks quite cool so another little airlock leads us down into this section and we've got a backup cockpit here always useful to have and right next to that backup cockpit there is actually a survival kit that's even smarter because there's nothing worse than being able to spawn back into your ship and not be able to get to the bridge um, something to think about if you're building your own ship here. So we've got reactors, of course, it's a maintenance area. It's going to be a bit rough and ready. We've got gyroscopes. And with that respawn there, you could fix a lot of the systems. We've also got the jump drive here. If you had access, the only thing is I'm working out is do you have access to any cargo systems from in here? Can you grab tools and components through to actually fix this up? So as we work our way down this shaft, we can get into the maintenance access. And you can see the guts of the ship and area. I know from playing with Husker, Husker hates it when I pry around in the guts of a ship. He's done a lot of the great Battlestar or Battlestar type ships. Anyway, so let's have a look over here. Quite a fantastic build. Really happy with this one. It's come together really nicely. It just feels like it belongs. The creator of this ship must have spent hours just getting that texture and that feeling of a build correct. Anyway, let's pop ourselves back inside and we're going to go up to the bridge and take it for a little bit of a test flight. So we've got the survival kit there, we've got the maintenance one there, let's take this up to the upper area. One more floor up and we're here. So, we have access to the cockpit, we have the radar screen in first person, all you need straight to the point you can see where people are approaching from, and then let's check our thrust. So look at that acceleration. That acceleration is great. The acceleration is still pretty damn good. You'll notice we have got welder systems built in here. So maybe some of the turrets do have welders on. I've just not seen them. We've also got access to turn on and off all the weapons. Now this is important. You can see at the bottom bar there. If you're building a ship for a server, make sure you can turn your weapons on and off. Now... You, you might be wondering why. This is because you might have a situation where someone wants to be friendly, you can turn them off quickly, but you also need to turn them back on quickly as well. Also, if you've damaged a wreck and you don't need turrets ripping it apart so you can salvage it for more, turning them off is great. Also, so your missile launchers don't miss at long range, you can activate them at a better time. We've got two thrusters on and off so we can conserve power, and then I'm guessing that's for the script. Oh, that's retro braking. Let's have a look at that. So let's run, make sure we run that. Oh! Okay, so that flips the ship and burns it for you. Very cool. I like that little addition. So we've got cameras on the next tab. So they're the front. I'm guessing that could be a rear camera. We've got the rocket launchers. Let's have a quick blast of them. Okay, so quite a standard six missile battery. Nothing to write home about there. We've got the connectors as well. So we can decide if we want to send supplies through or not. And let's just have a quick look at some of the other systems while we're bodding around. So we've got reactors. This is how you set up a toolbar. You've got access to everything and it makes sense. You see we've got wheels, we've even got parachutes. Parachutes is something to forget. When you're plummeting towards a planet and you have a spare pair of parachutes on, you, you've saved your day. A lot of people just smack into the earth. We've got access to assemblers, refineries, so we can turn all them off if we need the power or we need to produce things rapidly. Very nice laid out toolbar there. We've even got a beacon here that we can turn on and off. Let's have a look at that. Oh, there we go. So we can turn the beacon on in case we need to signal to friendlies. We've got their batteries as a backup source of power. are always great to have. So overall, a very, very functional ship. It's nice to have a look at these functional ships every now and then, because sometimes we do get stuck in the dreamland of these massive ships that really ain't too functional, or ship designs that look beautiful but don't have the firepower to deal it out. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Check out the link to this ship in the description below, and make sure to give the creator of this ship some love in the comment section.